Modern radiation detectors are usually compact, sometimes even pocket-sized, but that definitely wasn't the case more than 60 years ago, when carrying a radiation meter was basically a workout. In this video, we are going to take a closer look at a fascinating and rather rare Czechoslovak device called Vnežit Zážení Alpha Beta Gamma, which, if you're not fluent in Czech, translates to Alpha, Beta, Gamma radiation meter. Now, information about this device is extremely scarce. In fact, the only real source we could find was this old catalog from Tesla Liberec and no, it has nothing to do with Elon Musk or electric cars. The catalog isn't exactly overflowing with details either. It dedicates a grand total of one page to the instrument. Still, one page is better than none. The catalog itself is of course much longer as it features a range of other devices produced by Tesla Liberec at the time, all of which I never even knew existed. Perhaps one day some of them will make their way to us, but I find that highly unlikely. Even the Alpha Beta Gamma radiation meter was something I had never heard of before acquiring this one. As I mentioned earlier, these devices are extremely rare. The whole detection kit comes in a green suitcase. And when I said suitcase, I mean the kind of suitcase that makes you reconsider what portable really means. Even without the case, the unit weighs about 5.5 kilograms or roughly 12 pounds. The original locking mechanism is unfortunately broken, but the case can still be held shut with these two quick release pins. Once you open it up, there's actually quite a lot to unpack. But before we dive into the components, it's worth pointing out what this device isn't. This is not a military grade or civil defense radiation meter, meaning you certainly wouldn't find it in a fallout shelter or strapped to a CBRN military specialist back in the day. Instead, it was designed for laboratory use, specifically in situations where plugging it into electrical grid was either impossible or undesirable. The device measures radiation levels in impulses per minute, which at least for me is pretty unusual since I have never come across another detector like this. Most meters measure rangans or sieverts, but not this one. Have you ever come across something similar? I'm very curious. The kit comes with two detachable probes, one dedicated to alpha radiation and another designed for beta and gamma. Both connect to the main unit through a thick cable ending in this massive 7 pin connector. There is a variety of accessories and attachments, some of which I have no idea what they're for. Seriously, some of these look like they belong in a 1950 sci fi movie. If you recognize any of them, feel free to drop your comment below. One thing I know for sure is that this is a holder for vertical mounting of the probe, which allows adjustment of the distance between the probe and the measured sample. The probes themselves also differ in the technology they use. The Alpha probe is built around the type 30-50A proportional tube, while the Beta Gamma probe uses a more familiar Geiger Miller counter. Inside the suitcase, there is a small trapdoor. Hidden underneath are the original documents and a few extra accessories. There are test reports for both probes dating back to the 1960s and a pair of headphones for acoustic signaling still carrying their Tesla Liberec tag dated 1958. There's also a detachable stand for the probe holder. With everything unpacked and inspected, let's move on how the device was actually meant to be used. The very first step is inserting the batteries, but before that you have to access the battery compartment which is secured by a lid with a rotating lock. After decades in storage, the log has become badly oxidized so I had to open it off camera. As for the power supply, the unit can run on either three alkaline C size batteries or two anode batteries type 921090. <laughs> I honestly have no idea what those anode batteries even look like, so we'll be sticking with the more practical C size option. Then we'll plug in one of the probes, let's say the beta gamma one. The final step, which is optional, is connecting the headphones by pressing these two connectors into the main device. I've gotta say, it really feels very 1950s, as vintage as it gets. Now to power up the device. By rotating this huge knob from the powered off position, we switch to KA mode, which is meant for checking the anode voltage. Unfortunately, there seems to be an issue here because the indicator needle doesn't move at all. The filament voltage check in the next two positions works as expected, giving us the readings we want. Switching to the actual measuring modes, however, 
produces no response on the test source and the headphones remain silent. This indicates that while the device appears to be in a good cosmetic condition, some internal components are no longer operational. It's a real shame, because it's clear the device has never been used, but unfortunately, time has taken its toll. Nevertheless, examining the design, materials and technology of this meter provides a valuable insight into the technology of radiation measurement in the 1950s and 1960s. Repair of such a device would require specialized knowledge in electronics and radiation detection equipment, which I do not possess, never mind the spare parts. If anyone has insights or suggestions regarding potential repairs, drop them in the comments below. Don't feel too bad about the Mnežit Zaženi Alpha Beta Gamma not working, because very soon we'll be diving into more radiation detectors, both modern and legacy ones, those that actually work. If you're interested in modern, affordable and compact detecting devices, we'll be soon reviewing S2L detector from Bede Geiger. I honestly think this is a very well made, practical device and I can't wait to bring you a full-fledged review of it. Big thanks to Bede Geiger for providing us with their latest model. Of course, the display doesn't flicker at all in real life, it's just how my camera decided to film it. Later on, we'll revisit my old but still fully functional Czechoslovak IT65. This nowadays classic device can measure alpha, beta and gamma radiation using a single probe, displaying readings in rengans and millirengans. The measurements are admittedly quite rough, but it's perfectly capable of giving you a solid idea of whether an object or area is safe or if it's time to get out immediately. Still, it's not something you'd want to carry around. We'll also take a closer look at EDOS dosimeter, which tracks cumulative radiation exposure in units called RAD. Although they are highly unreliable due to their age, EDOSes are great for explaining short and long-term exposure effects to gamma penetrating radiation. Comparing these instruments will give you a great perspective on how radiation detection technology has evolved over the decades from bulky and heavy devices to portable, user-friendly meters you can actually carry in the field or as a part of your EDC kit. But that's not all. This interesting metal square is called dosimetric ruler and it was used to determine radiation levels in the aftermath of a ground or a low altitude nuclear explosion as well as in the path of a radioactive cloud. It also helps calculate radiation dose and the permissible duration of stay in a contaminated area. It's a fairly simple device with questionable accuracy and it's definitely not a substitute for a real measuring device. It only provides rough estimates based on radiation levels measured beforehand with proper instruments. So yeah, there's a lot to look forward to. I hope you liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time on CBRN Academy.